And as we've just heard, the U.S. is under pressure to review its strategy against ISIL, with the Iraqi leadership saying publicly that airstrikes aren't working. The U.S. has launched more than 4,000 strikes against ISIL targets, but they've failed to stop the group's advance. ISIL is now believed to control nearly half of Syria and about a third of Iraq. ISIL captured the last Iraqi government border crossing earlier this week, allowing its fighters to move freely between Syria and Iraq. Analysts say the fall of Ramadi was avoidable and should be the catalyst for the U.S. to rethink its operation. They say it's significant because it raises doubts over the security forces' capability to recapture Iraq's second city, Mosul, from ISIL control. Well, let's go to Phyllis Benis now. She is a fellow at the Institute for Policy Studies, joining me live from uh, Washington, D.C. Always great to have you with us on Al Jazeera. Uh, Ms. Benis, I think, I, I think that most people at this stage, apart from the U.S. State Department themselves, are saying that the U.S. strategy, the coalition strategy, isn't working. Uh, will more militarization, which is what the Iraqis seem to be asking for, is, is that the answer here? No, it's absolutely the wrong answer. I think part of the problem has been that the whole focus of U.S. strategy has been based on a military plan, despite the consistent statements from President Obama on down through every U.S. official, when they keep repeating there is no military solution. And yet, all of their actions are military. It's not surprising that they are losing. Uh, it's a very fluid situation on the ground at any moment, one or another uh, position of both ISIS and the U.S.-backed Iraqi uh, military could shift. But the overall problem is that a military solution is not possible. What we're hearing now is that the main response of the U.S. to the seizure of Ramadi is to send a thousand new uh, anti-tank missiles. Now that's going to decimate the city even further. It's not going to solve the problem. Uh, and yet this seems to be the only thing that the U.S. Is, is planning to do. We're hearing that Russia is now sending arms to the Iraqi military. Iran clearly has been sending arms and training Iraqi military, and the U.S. is. So if the U.S. and Russia and Iran can all be united in supporting one side in Iraq, why can't they no launch new serious negotiations both around the crisis in Iraq and to end the civil war in, in Syria. This is what's needed. New diplomacy, new kinds of efforts towards an arms embargo. Uh, there needs to be massive increases in the amount of support for refugees. Uh, and none of this is getting the attention that a failed military strategy is getting right now. And, and what we're seeing now with the uh, renewed military strategy uh, to gain back some of the recent uh, significant territory lost to ISIL is the rise of these Shia militias playing this really big role in the fight against ISIL. Um, I want to ask you, given that sectarianism is one of the key issues that led to the rise of ISIL in the first place, and what role do you see this, uh, this Shia militia, these Shia militias playing um, in the sectarian divide, the problems that are already exist? Yeah. I think that the role of the Shia militias is perhaps the strongest military force available right now to the Iraqi army, to the Iraqi government, which doesn't have a viable military of its own at this point, but it is guaranteed to, to worsen the sectarian divide. This isn't simply a sectarian divide between two equal sides, Sunni and Shia, that are challenging each other in some way. We're dealing with a scenario in which the Sunni community in Iraq has been not just discriminated against, but has faced massive arrests, torture in the prisons, extrajudicial murders of its communities, bombing of Sunni towns. So the distrust of the government is absolutely profound. And it's part of the reason for the strength of ISIS militarily. They are not fighting alone. They are getting support from military leaders who were once part of Saddam Hussein's military, who provide military strategic planning, training, etc. They are getting support from Sunni tribal militias and, and Sunni tribal leaders who don't agree with the extremism of ISIS, but see it as a lesser evil to this incredibly sectarian government, who even with the new prime minister, Prime Minister Abadi, talks a good talk about the need for unification, the need for ending sectarianism, but the practice of his government, the actions of his government, particularly if you look at the military and the intelligence agencies, has not changed since the bad old days of Nouri al-Maliki. All of them backed by the United States, all of them first put in power 
by the United States when it invaded and occupied Iraq. So this is very much the result of U.S. strategy in the region that's gone on now for more than a decade. And it's making it worse every time the U.S. sends bombs because what gets cheered here in, in Washington, oh great, we got the bad guys, is seen in Iraq by Iraqi Sunnis as one more piece of evidence that the U.S. is acting as the air force of the Kurds, the air force of the Shia against the Sunnis. So the military actions of the United States and its allies is simply making the situation worse. Phyllis Bennis uh, from the Institute for Policy Studies joining us from Washington, D.C. there. Thank you very much for your time. Now, Saudi Arabia says it's identified the suicide bomber who carried out